In this video, we're going to explore the subharmonicon's polyrhythm section, which includes these four rhythm knobs, these eight buttons, and the tempo knob. Similarly to how the subfrequency knobs are dividing against the VCO's frequency, each of these four knobs is dividing against the master tempo's frequency. To hear how they sound, I'm going to begin by assigning rhythm 1 to both sequencer 1 and sequencer 2. Notice that in the mixer section, I only have oscillator 1 up, as that's all I need to hear to understand how this section is functioning. Let's listen. As you can see, I have quite a fast tempo right now, and both sequencers are moving at the exact same rate. To make things more interesting, I'm going to assign rhythm 2 to sequencer 2, I'm going to make sure that rhythm 1 is only assigned to sequencer 1, and then I'm going to use the two rhythm knobs to divide to slower tempos, but different tempos from each other. As you can see, we've moved away from a straight rhythm and arrived at what's called a polyrhythm. This is when two different time signatures are combined to form a more complex rhythm. Furthering that concept, we can incorporate rhythm 3 and rhythm 4. I'm going to assign rhythm 3 to sequencer 1 and rhythm 4 to sequencer 2. And once again, I'm going to use the rhythm knobs to divide them to slower but differing tempos. Playing with different combinations of these four knobs can yield many interesting rhythms and time signatures. Another thing that we can do is decouple the envelope from both sequencers. Because the subharmonicon is paraphonic, this means that all six oscillators are fed into a single filter and a single VCA, each with their own envelope. If we want to trigger these envelopes not using the sequencer, there's a few options that we can do. The first of which is just to simply use this trigger button. This allows you to manually audition any pitches that you're trying to program, or just manually trigger the envelope during performance. Another thing that we can use is the patch bay's trigger input. There's a few different clock outputs that we can use to trigger the envelope, the first of which is the master clock output. I'm going to patch that into the trigger input and listen to how this sounds. Notice that the sequencer's movement does not correlate at all to what we're hearing from the envelope, and this is because it's just following the tempo knob. If we look at the patch bay, we also have two additional clock outputs on sequencer 1 clock and sequencer 2 clock. Let's patch sequencer 1 clock to the trigger input and listen to how this sounds. As you can see, with this patch configuration, the envelope is ignoring any movement happening on sequencer 2. Alternately, I can patch sequencer 2's clock to the trigger output to get the envelope to only listen to sequencer 2's movement. Playing with different combinations of this and the rhythm section can yield all sorts of interesting and fun experimentation. 